I oh, well, hello everybody. Hello, Governor. How you doing? It's Maddie Jagger here. Maddie Jagger from the Stones. <laughs> Come on, you bastards. Come on, you blooming bastards. Come on, wanker. <laughs> Let's go. All right, take me out to the bloody ball game. Take me out to the bloody crowds. Buy me some wanker peanuts and crocker jocks. Cause I don't care if I, oh, I missed it, I whiffed it. If I ever go back, oh, good one. So let's root, root, root for the Rolling Stones or the Red Sox. If they don't win, then this orangutan, it's going to get it. It's a shame. Oh, because it's one, two, three strikes. We're out at the old ball game. Don't get your knickers in a snit. This ain't Maddie Jagger. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. It's Matthew. <laughs> I'm just having some fun. Because, folks, finally, I know I'm late to the party here, but I wanted to wait because I finally got my edition of Hockney Diamonds by the Rolling Stones. I finally got a copy in, my copy, the copy I wanted. And it's a special copy. It's a copy I don't think anybody has shown here in the YouTube family. So I thought, why not? And I could talk about the album a little bit, what I think about it. Not a real deep dive Review, I'll try not take too long, but just a little taste of how I feel about it, things I like, things I don't like, and then show you my special copy. And you might if you get a little hint or idea what my special copy is by what I'm wearing and doing. So anyway, Rolling Stones, Hackney Diamonds, it came out on October 20th, so here I am a week late. But basically, as I said, I wanted to wait till I got my copy in. It's the 24th British, 26th American album for the Rolling Stones. It's their first album, per se, newly recorded album since 2016 with Blue and Lonesome, which is a great blues covers album, and I love it. But if you want to get technical, it's their first new original material studio album since 2005 with a bigger bang. So it's been a long time, 18 years, quite some time. And I'm a Stones fan. I, I've done Stones videos before. You know, they're, they're, in, they're right up there with me. British Invasion, 60s bands that I love. And they are so iconic. And they have just been, they've just been part of my life for as long as I can remember. Now, on this album, you got Mick. He's on guitar and harmonica. you got Keith on bass guitar. Ronnie's doing some bass guitar. They're also doing guitars, naturally. Charlie Watts is on two of the songs, one called Mess It Up, one called Live By The Sword. You know all this stuff, but I'm just trying to go over it a little bit. Bill Wyman is also on Live By The Sword, so that's a great track because you're getting five of the almost original Stones. I mean, Ronnie took over for McTaylor, who took over for Brian Jones, but, you know, to get those five guys together, Charlie and Bill, along with the other three guys, that's pretty special, so... That, that, that's a special moment on Live by the Sword. Elton John helps out on Get Close and Live by the Sword on piano. Stevie Wonder helps with keys and piano on Sweet Sounds of Heaven. And Lady Gaga also is a guest vocalist on Sweet Sounds of Heaven. Paul McCartney, the great Sir Paul McCartney, does bass on Bite My Head Off. And he does a fantastic job on kind of a fuzzy, down and dirty bass. Ben Montench from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers is on some Hammond organ. And it's produced by Andrew Watt. And Don Was also helps on one of the tracks, Live by the Sword. Steve Jordan does most of the drumming duties. Although um, Charlie is on two of the songs, as I said, Mess It Up and Live by the Sword. Now, who's noticeably absent is Daryl Jones, who's the Stones' regular bassist on tour and whatnot. And he's, I don't see him anywhere in the credits, so I don't know what happened. Maybe because Paul, Bill Wyman, uh, uh, Keith and Ronnie are doing bass duties. There was no room for Daryl. Now, let me just say real quick overall, to, again, this isn't a deep dive or anything like that. Great Stones album. I like it. I like it a heck of a lot. I think it's their best since Steel Wheels. I like Voodoo Lounge. There's flashes of good stuff on Voodoo Lounge. There's flashes of good stuff 
on Bridges to Babylon and there's flashes of great stuff on A Bigger Bang. I, I like all those albums, but as far as a really satisfying album, an album that I really can get behind, I think this is definitely their best since Steel Wheels. And as I looked real quick, I'm not going to do a ranking, but as I thought of their albums real quick in my head, going from this one, Hackney Diamonds, all the way back to that first, England's newest hit makers, I tried to like real quick, well, which, which one do I think it real quick, you know, fast, 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 which one do I think is better than, which one is not better than, but, and where I've come up with most of my real quick informal ranking, it's somewhere in the middle, I would say, out of the 26 U.S. albums, I would think this is somewhere around 11, 12, or 13, I don't know exactly yet, but that's not bad for this album, to be in that category, right there in the middle of their catalog, as far as uh, being good, I'd say that's pretty good if it hits number 11, 12, or 13 out of 26 U.S. albums, right? So um, that's real quick where I have it right now, somewhere in the middle of the catalog. And that ain't bad. That's pretty darn good for them, I think. And um, like I said, um, it, it, the, all right, let me go with the one negative. I've never been a big fan of the cover. I know a lot of people say, no, it's very artful and it's blah, blah, this type of art and all this stuff is great. I'm sorry. People have shown on their, on their channels and whatnot, and there's different variations of it. Some with just showing the hands with the dagger and the, and the hackney diamond and some showing some legs and some without that. It, there's different variations, but regardless of which variation I see, I, I, I don't hate it, but I don't like, it's not like a cover I go, wow, yeah, I'd like to frame that and hang it up on my wall. It's, it, it seems kind of um, chintzy, I guess you could say. Again, not putting it down, just it, it didn't jump out at me. It's not a cover, and especially the gatefold is horrible, all right? The cover I can tolerate, although I'm not a big fan of it, but when people have opened that gatefold and all, it's just rolling stones and like, broken glass and like boring I mean why not a really cool image of of the band or with Charlie or so, something cool black and white you know with like a really down and dirty image of them I, I don't know I I don't like the the gatefold at all and I'm going to show you my album in a minute here but the the, the cover uh it's been called great by some people and it's been called shite by some people, and I'm kind of leaning towards the shite, I'm, although I'm neutral about it, doesn't do much for me, I, I'm leaning towards shite, a bit boring, you know what I mean? Um, so, the addition I got, this cover I like, because weird partnership, but for some reason, the Rolling Stones partnered up with Major League Baseball, <laughs> yes they did, and so I said, Instead of getting that cover, which I really don't care for, I'm going to hold out a week or so and wait till I can get the Hackney Diamonds album that's the MLB Baseball Edition. And you could get any MLB Major League Baseball team you wanted, but naturally, I am a Red Sox fan, and so I went with the Red Sox Edition. BOS, Boston, with the Rolling Stones symbol, and the tongue has like a baseball stitching on it, and then Rolling Stones, beautiful white cover with the beautiful red and blue, red, white, and blue, and I, I just love that image. So that's cool, and the back, very artsy looking, Red Sox logo here, there's the track listing, okay, and... Uh, it's on Rolling Stones record, Geffen Records, and Polydor. I believe it's listed as being on. But I just love that. So I got my Boston Red Sox edition. And what's cool about all the MLB special editions, they're all on white vinyl. So there you go. There's my white vinyl edition of Hackney Diamonds. Beautiful, beautiful. And I love the inner sleeve. You got the regular, uh, very thick, high quality heavy stock paper this thing and you get all the credits here very similar to what you're getting on the um on, on the other iterations of the album uh, maybe different colors and whatnot but it's very similar information but i love this back it's got mlb with the stones logo and the stitching baseball stitching and then there's the mlb logo right there on the inner sleeve so that is very cool so um yeah i love that i just think that is very sharp looking 
And I, I love having my Red Sox edition of this album. Yeah, how, how the Rolling Stones, a British band, a British pop rock blues band from the 60s, relates to American baseball, I don't know. But it was a cool little partnership, and I know it's going to be collectible, so I grabbed it. Um, I think once they're gone, they're gone. And I think some of the teams are already sold out. I don't think the Red Sox one was yet, but some of the other teams are starting to sell out when I last checked. All right, so real quick, I'll go through the songs. And I'll be out of here, folks, I promise. Angry, I love the leadoff track, all right? You know, because it's so fresh and new, people don't want to compare it to some of their classics. But it's like anything else. I remember when Start Me Up first came out in 1981, and that was some people were like hot and cold on that song. They were like, eh, I don't know if it's gone. And now Start Me Up is like a classic Stones rock song. Everyone loves it. I think the same is going to happen with what happened with Angry over time. I think people are going to grow to love it. And it's going to be in that upper echelon of Stones, great leadoff tracks, uh, rock and roll tracks. Angry is just a great little rocker. I, I, it's just got that classic Stones rock vibe. And I think one day it's going to be looked at as a classic. Get Close, great song, really fabulous, down and dirty, Stones Rock, with some great guitar work. I'll just say the guitar work is great. Is, is Keith and Ronnie doing anything very intricate or extensive on this album? No, but their flourishes, their leads that they do do, the lead guitar, the, the uh, appreggios, the, the riffs, they come in, they go out, but they do a great job. I love the guitar on this entire album. So there's some great guitar in Get Close, but really cool is a guy, I think his name is James King, does a fabulous saxophone solo on it. I'm sure back in the day, if he hadn't passed away, may he rest in peace, Bobby Keys would have been the one doing the sax solo in this, in this track. But we have the great James King doing it, and it sounds great. Get Close. Depending on You is a very pleasing, pleasurable ballad, mid-tempo classic from the Stones. I love it. All right, Bite My Head Off, one of my favorites on the album. It's a scorching rock, punk rock style. I won't say it's punk, but it's like a really hard-driving rocker with Paul on bass. There's a little bit of swearing in it and some <laughs> naughty bits and naughty words. But um, if you go on Spotify, you can get a sanitized version or you can get the regular version, all right, for what that's worth. Great song, though. Great rocker from the Stones. Whole Wide World is another fabulous down and dirty Stones rock song, and I love the guitar work on it. Uh, it. It may not be one of the standouts of the album, Whole Wide World, but it's it's a great, pleasurable Stones song in my book. Dreamy Skies is absolutely fabulous. I love it. It's like countrified Stones. You know how they, every once in a while on one of their albums, I have a little country-flavored song? Well, Dreamy Skies is that track on this album. Got the pedal steel. It's just a slower, classic Rolling Stones song, and I love it. I think it's fantastic. So we're, we're hitting it on all cylinders at this point. Mess It Up. First one with Charlie on drums, and this is a great groovy rocker. This has got that funky, uh, maybe, I don't want to say, maybe like early 80s Stones vibe to it, but it's uh, very today, very 2023, but it's the one track on the album, and I think it is an older track because they recorded it several years ago with Charlie, I believe, but Mess It Up has that funky groove, you know, that that cool rocking uh, 80-ish Stones vibe to it, and I love it. Great song. Live by the Sword. Now, some people have put this song down and called it their least favorite. At first, I wasn't sure about it, but the more I listen to Live by the Sword, the more I like it, and the melody sticks in my head. You gotta live by the sword, you're gonna die by the sword. Live by the gun, you're gonna die by the gun. If you live by the knife, well, you're gonna get stabbed. It, it just, I don't know, it just, it's got a, a groove to it that I, I, it's grown on me. I like Live by the Sword, and again, it's the one with Charlie, uh, Mick, Keith, Ronnie, and, and Bill Wyman is back. So you get that, that classic lineup of the mid-70s to mid mid -70s all the way up to Steel Wheels on a, on a song grooving again. How can you beat it? I like it, all right? And uh, Elton is also on that track. I think it's another winner. Driving Me Too Hard is the opening... People have tried to say, oh, the opening's like tumbling dice. Well, it really isn't. The opening, 
riff and the guitar tone kind of reflects Tumbling Dice a little bit, but the song is nothing like Tumbling Dice. So that don't listen to that. It's not. It, it's got that opening riff has the vibe, but it's it's different. Okay, and it's just a great all on its own track. It's melodic. It's a mid-tempo Stones pop rock song. Again, not like Whole Wide World. It's not one of the ones that stands out on the album, but it's one of those sleepers that's there, but it's still good. It's still solid, and I like it. Tell Me Straight, it's a fabulous Keith Richards ballad. Keith gets his one you know, lead vocal on the album, and he gets... Uh, Tell Me Straight, and he does a fabulous job with it. I like the groove of it. I like the vibe. Sweet Sounds of Heaven is epic. This is the big epic, almost like a big gospel-esque number, you know, uh, powerful and, 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 and bombastic, uh, like seven-something minutes long, and uh, Lady Gaga sings with Mick on it. And uh, if my only criticism of it is a little bit long. Um, it, it goes, there is an edited version though you can get on Spotify and other places on YouTube. You can get the edited version, which is only like five minutes long. That's probably the more concise, better version, the five minute version. But on the album, you're getting the full seven minute something, a little too long. Great song though, I'm not putting it down. I'm just saying, I think the five minute version would have been enough. <laughs> but it kind of fades out and then it comes back in again for another two minutes. But still a great track. Uh, like I said, gospel-flavored, big, epic, bombastic, but a great, great Stones song. And then we end almost like the Stones going back to what influenced them the most, that down-and-dirty Delta Blues, back to the roots, back to the basics, stripped down Stones on Rolling Stone Blues. And um, I, I would say, oh, that's a fitting way to end their career, but I don't think they're ending their career. I think they have another album, like 75% in the can, <laughs> that's probably coming in the next year or two. So... You know, I think we're going to hear more from the Rolling Stones. So, folks, I like this album a heck of a lot. Am I putting it in their top five? No, I'm not. Uh, but I'm not certainly putting it in their bottom eight or so. This is definitely somewhere in the middle right now. I, I haven't figured it out exactly where yet, but that's not bad. 26 albums to be somewhere in the middle is pretty damn good. And I love my edition because I did not want that... I, that cover just did not float my boat, folks. I'm sorry. It just it just didn't do it for me, you know? So I went with this beautiful white MLB edition, uh, you know, with the, with the inner sleeve and this great, great Red Sox edition. Any team in the MLB is available. So if you have a favorite team, go grab this. No gatefold, but so what? I didn't like the gatefold in the regular one anyway. So that's it, folks. 17 minutes. I'm out of here. Almost 18 minutes. I love you all. Thanks for being here. I know I'm late doing this, but I wanted to show you my special edition. Take care, everybody. I appreciate you being here. Please, I don't say it often, but like, comment, share, subscribe. Is that what you say? Please, I'd appreciate it. It helps me. It helps my channel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.